Hi, in this video I'm going to show you a super fast and easy way to make watercolor paint. You can turn many types of dry media into watercolor, allowing you to get more versatility out of your drawing supplies. Quickly go from drawing to painting with chalk pastels, willow charcoal, or even a plain old graphite pencil. To demonstrate this, I'll create a couple pieces of art using supplies from Arteza. I'll be painting on their round cotton watercolor paper, which works great for mixed media, pens, and can take multiple layers of watercolor. I like this pad because it's glued down on all sides, so the paper remains nice and flat while working on it. I'll show you how I transformed a stick of charcoal into paint and turned all 60 Arteza mica powders into pearlescent watercolors. These can also be mixed with any tube of paint for making beautiful custom colors. This video's focus is on small batch watercolor paint making, meant for personal use. I will prioritize simplicity to make this feasible for doing spontaneously during any given painting session. Some handmade watercolor videos focus on paint making on a larger scale or starting a small business. Of course, you could take more time to perfect a custom binder formula and make polished looking pans of paints for sale, but not every artist wants to set up shop or use up a lot of costly materials at once. Paint making can be as simple as just mixing pigment plus binder. In the case of watercolor, that binder is gum arabic, a tree sap. If you've ever been intimidated by the world of handmade watercolors and brushed it off as too much work or too messy to do for yourself, then I hope you'll appreciate this simplified approach to paint making. I have a lot of respect for the work handmade paint makers do. They often take great care to develop a custom binder formula with glycerin or honey for making your dry pans re-wet easily. Some grind pigments in a bowl or under an expensive glass molar tool to thoroughly coat each particle with binder. Then they tediously pour paint into pans to dry in multiple layers over several weeks. Seeing this process can dissuade the more casual painter from ever even experimenting with how simple paint making can be. By adding gum arabic to your art supply collection, you can really increase the versatility of dry coloring media. You could use gum arabic in liquid form. It can be convenient in an eyedropper bottle, but I really find that the powder form has a far longer shelf life, is easier to measure out, and leaves your scoop clean. When you stir up gum arabic with water and pigment, it works like a water-soluble glue to adhere the color to paper. If you don't use enough gum, the color could be rubbed off the page after the paint dries. Some larger particle pigments, like glittery mica colors, may require a little extra binder to make sure they stay stuck to the page. I use roughly one part binder and up to four times as much pigment. I don't carefully measure, but I always try to err on the side of too much binder. And then I stir in just enough drops of water to make a smooth mixture. Mica is a non-toxic pearlescent white silicate mineral known as the ingredient PW20, but the colorful powders have been coated with an undisclosed secondary pigment. For instance, gold mica is made by coating the pearl white mica base with a red or yellow iron oxide like PR101 or PY42. A silver tone or sparkly black color is made with mica plus a black pigment like PBK11 or PBK7 often resulting in a very light fast powder. Because bright pinkish red pigments tend to be the least light fast in any brand, the pink pearlescent mica colors will be the most sensitive to fading. I was happy to discover that 45 of the 60 colors had excellent light fastness. After a year of sun, nearly all of the colors aside from pinks, lemongrass, and tangerine proved suitable for long-term wall display. Mica powders are often used for resin crafting, cosmetics, or soap, but they are wonderful for use as an art pigment and can be mixed into any type of transparent paint, including watercolors, acrylics, or oils. Most dry coloring supplies like graphite or watercolor pencils, charcoal, or pastels can simply be rubbed against sandpaper or a nail file to create a powder fine enough for paint use. 
If super smooth uniform paint is desired, then you could further grind the powder, but you may be surprised at how fast you can make a decent paint this way. There's a couple really good perks about doing this kind of experimentation. One being you can find a use for a supply that was just sitting around gathering dust by turning it into something unique. If you mix any of these powders with each other or into your other paints, the mixture can be truly different than anything you're going to find available for sale. You may end up inventing your own favorite convenience mixture. You also get full control and understanding of the ingredients in your paint. It doesn't get much more simple and all natural than something like charcoal, basically cooked wood branches, mixed with gum arabic tree sap. I like to use up some of my most neglected tube paints by mixing them with mica powders. I stir in a touch of gum arabic to help account for the extra pigment load. Since this is so quick and easy, I can choose to make a pan of my own special custom color to use the next few times I paint, or decide to just prepare a smaller amount per painting session right on my mixing palette. Since graphite pencils are so affordable and common, they're a great choice to begin experimenting with turning your drawing tool into watercolor. Pencil graphite is slightly shiny, so it leaves a shimmery silver black sheen in mixtures with watercolors. Charcoal is matte, soft black, and it granulates, creating a speckled texture effect in wet washes. It's nice having the freedom to use pencils or charcoal for drawing, mark making, and dry textures. You can blend or smudge it on paper and then completely change up your approach by sanding it into a little gum arabic to use with a wet paintbrush. I really enjoy how both charcoal and gold mica look when blended with watercolor, especially with the phthalo blue. The color variety in Arteza's mica set gave me plenty of subject matter freedom, so I ended up using a few different blues and silver for the bird, gold in the background, 
purples and greens on the floral parts. I hope you enjoyed this simple method of making watercolor and playing with custom mixtures. I'd love to hear what sort of coloring supplies you might turn into watercolor or mix in with your other paints. If you would like to see me tackle paint making on a bigger scale, make a video on my favorite pigment powders, types of additives, or even share some of the more unusual experiments I've done with binders, such as combining gouache with acrylics, let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.